You're so closely associated with the city of New York. Yeah. You, of all people, understand the passion surrounding 9-11. What do you say to those family members who prote protested earlier this week and will be doing so again on Friday? Well, nobody's gotten to the bottom of 9-11, unfortunately, and they should have. What? That was Donald Trump providing cover for the Saudis and doing so shame, shamelessly. And uh, of course, uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, the Saudis were behind the largest terrorist attack on US soil, which of course happened on 9-11. And it's a startling change of tone for someone who vehemently opposed the Iraq war as a part of their presidential campaign. Now, before we get any further, um, here are some details behind Trump's comments. Trump is apparently hosting some sort of golf event at his golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey. Um, so Liv is backed by uh, the Public Investment Fund, Saudi Arabia's sovereign wealth fund that is chaired by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the guy who ordered the assassination and dismemberment of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Um, now critics of the uh, event say that it is an attempt by the Saudis to sports wash their record on human rights. Uh, Brett Eagleson, uh, who's the founder of 9-11 Justice, says this in response to this story. We can't imagine that the president, knowing what he knows and with his history on this, would host and facilitate the Saudi government. Um, have this tournament literally 50 miles from ground zero in a state where 750 were murdered. And Trump, by the way, is also hosting um, the event to retaliate against the Professional Golfers Association of America, which uh, pulled the 2021 PGA Championship from, from Trump's golf course after the January 6th riot. So, you know, uh, if you hurt Trump's feelings, he has absolutely no problem aligning himself with some of the worst people on the planet uh, to make a point and to continue playing his uh, favorite. Game, sport, whatever you want to call it. Uh, no, I, I don't think anyone loves golf more than Donald Trump does. It's like an obsession. Well, and other, if he has to rub men. shoulders with the yeah. Saudis to do it, he'll do it. I, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but it is uh, that other other old white men really really love golf. And look, I've watched golf on occasion because I've of placed. Course. Of course, you have Emma. Of course, I've, you have. I've placed <laughs> bets on it. Okay, it's legal <laughs> here, but but. I know that Bedminster Golf Course. I'm from New Jersey. Um, I also uh, grew up in the shadow of 9/11 in New Jersey. I was, lived in the suburb of New York, and um, that was one of my first formative memories. Was what happened on 9/11 and the horror associated with it in the community. Now, um, so it is, I think, particularly egregious that it's happening at the New Jersey course. Uh, but at the same time, this live uh, tournament that's happening now is this really, I think, fascinating dynamic within the golf sport because they are essentially triple paying every, all of these star players, mostly players that uh, who like Phil Mickelson, who's an all time great, but he's on the bit of the decline in his career. And he's made so, so, so much money, but as a way to kind of retire and not uh, play in the traditional tournaments, he's essentially accepted this blood money from Saudi Arabia and gotten a ton of criticism from it, but for it, I should say. But there have been a lot of golfers that have followed suit because the money is just way too good. Um, and the PGA Tour is not responding favorably to that. It's unclear if these golfers will even be allowed to participate in the other tournaments associated with it because of their uh, participation in the Live Tour. And frankly, I am, you know, I'm surprised by the intense reaction to it, I guess, because mm -hmm. look, the Saudis are just are despicable and it's blood money. I understand that. But there are a ton of, I don't know, golf tournaments, I'm sure, in the past that have been sponsored by ExxonMobil <laughs> or other um, corporations that are just as atrocious as the Saudi government. And so to me, there's a bit of hypocrisy in play there. But it is so egregious that of course Donald Trump has to be at the forefront of it. Of course he's hosting Live, just given the fact that it's widely considered to be ruining the sport of golf and also to be an unethical thing that's being done within the sport. 
You know, it's interesting because every time the topic of Saudi Arabia comes up, especially in the context of Donald Trump providing cover for them. I mean, he certainly did it in trying to cover up Jamal Khashoggi's murder, <laughs> which was very clearly ordered by Mohammed bin Salman. I remember Trump's initial reaction to that, and he stuck to this talking point for a while was just to like deny that Mohammed bin Salman was behind it. It was ridiculous. And I keep thinking about, I know it's weird, but it, you know, in 2016, when Alex Jones and Roger Stone decided to crash our set during our live broadcast at the Republican National Convention, one of the statements made by Alex Jones that I'll never forget was critical of us for not being critical enough of Saudi Arabia, which was ridiculous because we've always been critical of Saudi Arabia. And and you know, we we said that in the exchange. But then you have Donald Trump providing cover for the worst actions of the Saudi government and no criticism, no critique from the right. Now, when Biden says he will make the Saudis pariahs for what they did to Jamal Khashoggi, and then he reneged on that. The left's been incredibly critical of Biden on that issue because we actually have values and principles that we believe in. We're not just talking heads who use these talking points to attack our political opponents. We actually apply the same standards to, to both parties and politicians representing both parties. But no, I mean, for Donald Trump, as long as it benefits him, he has no problem propping up the worst people in the world. Oh no, yeah, and and it's obviously that was a dog whistle about Jank, I would guess, right? From just because Jank's Muslim, that would be my guess. I don't really know, but but regardless, I would say that all of what you're saying is true, Anna, about the the the, the Saudi government as well. well. You're right. You're right about the dog whistle, right? So oh. Jank, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I um, I was I'm reminded too that uh, Paul Manafort and Roger Stone were in a consulting practice together, where they essentially were uh, basically consulting for every terrible dictator in the world, uh, and, and they had no problem doing that uh, at all. These kinds of right wing ghouls actually see themselves in people like Putin and Mohammed bin Salman. And they understand that they're such dirty actors, and they're so willing to 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 uh, bend the rules in their favor to make money that they totally. are they're bedfellows to that degree. So that's why Donald Trump is quick to uh, to, to to side with the Saudi government or Russia, etc. It's because he sees himself in those in those leaders. And final thing I'll, I'll draw your attention to, you know, Donald Trump will use talking points that tend to contradict one another, <laughs> depending on what's convenient for him at any given point in time. So um, I'll direct you to a New York Magazine. It's an intelligencer uh, headline from February 17th of 2016. Uh, Ken Klippenstein actually tweeted this out, and the headline says, "Quote." Donald Trump suggested Saudi Arabia was behind 9-11 multiple times Wednesday. It's an Eric Leavitt story, so you can check that out. And then fast forward to July 28th, 2022, Trump defense hosting Saudi golf tour. No one's gotten to the bottom of 9-11, right? And I would regret not mentioning that there are other financial motives here. So let's go to the very last graphic. Six months after leaving the White House, Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law, secured a $2 billion investment from a fund led by the Saudi Crown Prince, a close ally during the Trump administration, despite objections from the fund's advisors about the merits of the deal. The way our government is set up incentivizes greedy, self-interested people to seek power, not to benefit anyone's life, but rather to enrich their own financially. And that's that's what we see time and time again, even when it comes to murderous individuals like the uh, dictators over in Saudi Arabia who uh, order for the assassination of Washington Post journalists, it's insane. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, 
you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.